The name of this tutorial is Photoshop and Blender Part 3, Creating an Alpha Mask Using GIMP. In the previous tutorial, Part 2, we saw how the alpha mask of the scene was used so it could work as the foreground image in the Alpha Over node to combine a foreground with a background. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the GIMP to create an alpha mask for my locomotive JPEG image, which does not have an alpha channel. In a future tutorial, I'll show you how to create an alpha mask in Blender. The first step is to separate the locomotive from its background, using the various selection tools the GIMP and Photoshop as well offer. The GIMP has seven different selection tools. It's a time-consuming and detail-oriented process. And of course, the more detailed the selection, the better the result. I don't own Photoshop. I suspect there may even be more selection tools in it. Regardless, the process is the same. So here's the process in the GIMP. Open up the original locomotive JPEG image, which does not have an alpha channel. Now we need to select the locomotive, extracting it from its background. Note that the dimensions of the locomotive are 2,592 by 1,944 pixels. I will do a rough outline of the locomotive to get an approximate selection using the Lasso Select tool. Don't worry about a precise select. Just make sure that the entire locomotive is included in the Lasso Select. We can refine the result later. The purpose of this tutorial is not to show how to do a precise select in a 2D image editor, but rather to show the procedure for creating an alpha mask. Now I'll open up the Layers dialog. From the Windows menu, select Dockable Dialogs and then Layers. You could also press Ctrl-L as the shortcut. I'll also add the Channels dialog by clicking the little right arrow that says Add, this icon, and selecting Channels. The JPEG image has red, green, and blue channels, but no alpha channels. To add an alpha channel, I'll add a layer mask. A layer mask, add layer mask. I'll change the option from the default, initialize the layer mask to white, to initialize from selection. Click on the layers dialog. On the left is the background image. On the right is the layer mask. Note that the layer mask is initialized to white, fully opaque, in the selection area, and black, fully transparent, in the area not selected. I'll apply the layer mask. Layer, mask, apply layer mask. Now the layer ma dialog only shows the background image. I'll switch to the channels dialog. Note that the alpha channel has been created with our initialized layer mask. I'll save the result as a PNG file and accept the defaults. The PNG, Portable Network Graphic Format, supports an alpha channel, which is what we need to have to get it composited as a foreground image in the alpha over node. After I saved the mask, I did some further editing of the PNG file in the GIMP to get a more precise selection to use in Blender. You are looking at the result. I won't claim that it's perfect, but it's precise enough for our purposes. There's a lot of tweaking, switching between lasso select, the rectangle and circle select, zooming in and out, deleting the background and some of the inner areas of the locomotive, and so on. Often you'll need to refer to the original image to make sure you're not cutting out part of the locomotive when you think you're cutting out part of the background. Now I'm in Blender 2.63. This procedure should work pretty much in any Blender version that supports composite nodes. This feature has been around for a while. As in Part 2, I will delete the default cube and add a smooth, subdivision surfaced blue Suzanne. To make the image size the same as the original, in the Render Properties, I'll change the resolution from the default to 2592 by 1944 pixels at 100%, which is the locomotive's resolution. I'll also click the RGBA to make sure the alpha channel is stored as well. I'll then switch to the composite setup and check the use nodes check box. So here are the steps. First I'll add an image of the alpha mask that I created in GIMP. I'll connect that image to a viewer node. Note that the opaque area of the locomotive is white and the transparent background is black. I'll scale the image to 0.4 and 0.3, preserving the aspect ratio, to size the image so it works relative to the monkey. Your mileage may vary. 
I'll add an alpha overnode to combine the locomotive with the render layer and press F12 to render. Now I'll connect the locomotive as the foreground with Suzanne as the background in the alpha overnode. The foreground is the bottom socket, the background is the top. This is a bit counterintuitive. I'll connect the alpha overnode to the composite node. Now I'll switch. I'll alpha over Suzanne as the foreground and the locomotive as the background. And here's the result in the GIMP. The convert pre-mull checkbox in the alpha over node can have a major effect on the node's output. If it's not checked, the sky color affects the background output, as well as the tint of the locomotive. If checked, the alpha mask, black, is outputted as the background. I'll go into the world tab and change the sky color to a red color, but the convert pre-mull checkbox unchecked to demonstrate this. And now I'll check the convert pre-mull checkbox so you'll see the difference. Most of the time you'd want convert pre mold to be checked. So there it is. You should now be able to take any image from your digital camera and place it in your blender scene. Or you can do an effect such as where in the world is Suzanne, alpha overing her with a picture of the Statue of Liberty for example. We'll see in later tutorials other techniques inside of Blender not needing the GIMP or Photoshop and possibly impossible in them, such as Suzanne flying over New York City. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you in the next one. Happy blendering.